In this chapter, we explore the use of the FIT principle in order to get the most out of a training session. It's FIT, spelled F-I-T-T, which stands for frequency, intensity, type, and time. Let's consider each element in turn. Let's start with frequency. When training, a decision has to be made about how often to train in order to allow enough time for the muscles in the body to heal and restore themselves. Cardiorespiratory training, or aerobic conditioning, ideally requires a minimum of three and up to six sessions a week to be effective. Resistance training, which utilises weights and provides the body with an aerobic workout, is quite dependent on the specific needs of the individual. Ideally, a program that works on all body parts in a session can be done three to four times a week with a day's break in between sessions for rest. If the resistance program only focuses on one or two body parts per session, it can be completed almost daily. Intensity is the second fit principle rule. It relates to how much effort is being put into the training session. The heart rate, measured in beats per minute, provides information about the intensity of an aerobic endurance workout. The maximum desired heart rate is calculated as 220 beats per minute, minus the person's age. For an untrained person on a training regime, a target heart rate zone of 50 to 70% of their maximum heart rate is a good place to start. So a 20-year-old has a predicted maximum heart rate of 200. That is 220 minus 20. 50 to 70% of this rate is 100 to 140 beats per minute. But a better trained athlete can handle a higher target rate zone of between 70 and 85% of their maximum heart rate. For anaerobic training utilising weights, the workload is a measure of intensity and has three components. The amount of weight lifted during an exercise, the number of repetitions, and the length of time taken to complete all exercises in a set. The type of exercise is the third component in the FIT principle and refers to the particular kind of exercise that is selected as the basis of the training program. For anaerobic training, the best form of exercise to work the neuromuscular system is resistance training, which involves using weights, resistance bands or completing circuit training with a focus on bodyweight exercises. The final T in the FIT principle of training stands for time. The length of the exercise workout should have a particular duration and should be taken into account when calculating the overall training time required to get into shape. For anaerobic training, people with lower fitness levels should aim to keep their heart rate within their specific target heart rate zone for a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes per session. As fitness increases, this can be increased to 45 to 60 minutes as fitness levels improve. Professionally trained athletes risk overtraining and injury if they exercise outside reasonable limits. So a common sense approach is advisable when planning training durations. Research reveals that a minimum of six weeks is generally required before clear signs of fitness improvement are seen in training. And perhaps as much as 12 months is required before a peak in fitness is reached. Overall, a crucial component in the FIT principle not specifically mentioned is rest. Exercising too frequently and too intensely hinders the body's ability to recover and adapt.